Let's take a quick look at an introduction to the student t-distribution, which you might also hear called student's t-distribution, or simply the t-distribution. This video goes into some of the mathematical details, such as how the t-distribution arises, its probability density function, and mean and variance. I have another video that provides an applied, non-technical introduction. The t-distribution is an important continuous probability distribution that is widely used in statistical inference. The t-distribution is very strongly related to the standard normal distribution. Let's look at that a little more closely. Suppose we let the random variable z have the standard normal distribution, and we let the random variable u have a chi-square distribution with new degrees of freedom, and z and u are independent random variables. Then if we take the standard normal random variable z and divide by the square root of the chi-square random variable u divided by its degrees of freedom, we end up with a random variable that has the t-distribution with new degrees of freedom. So we often represent this random variable with the capital letter T. Now this might all sound a little abstract, and you might wonder when we would ever wish to divide a standard normal random variable by the square root of an independent chi-square random variable over its degrees of freedom. But this actually has some common and important practical applications for us. If we are drawing n independent observations from a normally distributed population with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then the quantity x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n has the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Here the sample mean x bar is a random variable representing the mean of the n observations, and the sample standard deviation s is a random variable representing the standard deviation of the n observations. This might not look like the quantity given on the previous slide, but it can be shown mathematically that this satisfies those conditions. That's something you might show in a mathematical statistics course. An implication of this is that the t-distribution often arises in statistical inference on means, and in other related scenarios, when we are sampling from a normally distributed population. This is a situation that comes up very frequently in statistics. In practice, we very often use the t-distribution in inference procedures. Here's the probability density function of the t-distribution with new degrees of freedom. The PDF of the t-distribution is not something we work with directly very often. Gamma represents the gamma function, and I'll let you look that up if you need to learn about that. If a random variable has a t-distribution, then it can take on any finite value. There is one parameter, nu, the degrees of freedom. In practice, this will typically be a positive whole number value but it doesn't have to be an integer. We'll take a look at a few plots in a moment, but a few things to take note of now. The median of the t-distribution is zero. For the mean and variance, there are a couple of technical restrictions. The mean of the t-distribution mu is equal to zero as long as the degrees of freedom nu is greater than one, otherwise it's undefined. And the variance of the t-distribution is equal to nu over nu minus 2 as long as nu is greater than 2. A very important notion is that as the degrees of freedom increase, the t distribution tends toward the standard normal distribution. Let's plot the PDF and see what it looks like. The curve in white is the standard normal distribution, and the curve in green is the t distribution with one degree of freedom. I've truncated the plot here at minus 6 and 6, but the possible values do go off toward positive infinity and minus infinity. Like the standard normal distribution, the t-distribution is symmetric about 0, but the t-distribution has heavier tails, meaning more area in the tails, and it has a lower peak. As the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution tends toward the standard normal distribution. I'm going to let the degrees of freedom increase from 1 through 20, and we'll see what happens. Here the curve in green is the t-distribution with 20 degrees of freedom. I'm stopping at 20, but we'd see that if we continue to let the degrees of freedom increase, the green curve would get closer and closer to the white standard normal curve. The median is right here at zero, and the mean is also zero. 
the variance is the degrees of freedom over the degrees of freedom minus 2. In this case, that's 20 over 18. Note that's a little bigger than 1, which is the variance of the standard normal distribution. Even though these two curves look very similar here, there are some important practical differences. The t distribution with 20 degrees of freedom still has quite a bit more area in the tails. And very often, in practical problems, we are interested in the area in the tails. So there are important differences between the t and standard normal distributions, even if they look similar when plotted. In practice, we often want to find areas and percentiles of the t distribution, and that requires integrating the probability density function. Unfortunately, there is no closed form solution, and that integration must be carried out numerically. Fortunately, that's been done for us using computer software, and we will find areas and percentiles for the t distribution using software or a t table.